Hi, and welcome back to Bean Talk. We can finally put away this Magnum grinder. I'll do it right away because we've got our brand new G50 grinder from La Cimbali. In case you're new to our channel, our name is Bean Talk Coffee News and we like to talk about all things coffee. So whether this is tech reviews like today or going to local coffee festivals, talking to people from the industry, we like to do it all. So if you're also into coffee like us, um, please give us a subscribe and hit the like button. It would mean a lot. And yeah, back to the video. All right, so I think it's easy to say that this is a stunning new grinder. I'm amazed by the looks of it, really like the design. And so I'd like to start talking about the design a little bit. First of all, of course, we have our hopper up here, which fits about a kilo of coffee. It's also easily taken off with a little screw in the back. Unscrew this and of course, <laughs> close this here so you can just take it off. And then you have your hopper in case you need to put the coffee in the bag overnight or something like that. Turn it on. What of course you'll notice right away comparing this to the Magnum is the all new touch screen. Of course the Magnum also had like a small touch screen but this is actually a proper touch screen with color and you can set all sorts of things but I want to get into detail about that later on. First of all I'd like to talk about this fork that we have for putting in the porta filter which is a very very clever little uh, function. Of course it holds the porter filter perfectly. It even has a little actuator in there that you can also set. So if you press the actuator that it starts grinding one of the four portions that you want. But now I have it set to where I just have to press here. Coffee's going in. And now I can use this little spout here and shake it like this to distribute the coffee a little. You know, many baristas would hit it like this, or this, or this, or this. You could just use this function. It's a little awkward right now because of my um, hand positioning, but it's quite nice and easy to use. Now that we've done that, let's make a quick espresso. For this machine we're using, or for this new grinder, we're using our La Cimbali M200 as a perfect match. Let's enjoy an espresso from the grinder. Just in general, talking about the looks, the design and the haptics of the G50. We have a full aluminum body, which just makes it look and feel very nice, very robust. Definitely very high quality and premium when it comes to that, what you can't see right now from the back. But I will turn around the coffee grinder. You actually have this little sign here, which is illuminated with LEDs. You can turn it off as well if you want to, but I think it's really cool. I'm guessing that also in the future you might be able to customize this. So for example, if you have a coffee shop and you always use the same kind of coffee or if you have different ones and you have the grinders next to it, you could, for example, put the name of the roaster and the coffee in there or something like that, I'd imagine. Nice to work with this, this little light that you have here. So you actually illuminate the coffee when you grind it. After a short little coffee break, let's talk about some of the technology in this grinder. First off, we already talked about the touch interface here that you can actually use for setting the grind size as well. Go minus if you want to go finer and plus if you want to go coarser, of course. And two very interesting features of this uh, particular grinder. One is the PGS system that some of the other La Cimbali grinder already had, which basically means you can build up a connection between the grinder and the espresso machine. If you set it on the espresso machine, this is connected via Bluetooth, and the coffee machine says, hey, um, the coffee is running too fast, tells the grinder, set it finer, for example, and vice versa. This is very helpful for, especially for restaurants or coffee shops, for example, that might not have as skilled baristas as some other places might have. But even for those skilled baristas, there's a very, very handy feature, which is called the stabilizer. And some people might know from the Casadillo Inea, grinder. What it basically does is if you change the grind size, it also changes the time that it grinds. Because of course, if you go finer or coarser, um, this is also gonna change the amount of coffee that you put through if it stays, if the time stays the same. What it does, for example, right now we have for our double espresso 6.7 seconds. If I go finer, then now we have 6.8 seconds. The grinder basically tries to compensate this change in the mass. 
so that ideally you would have the same weight output, which is quite handy to use for this grinder because then you don't have to every time you change the grind size you have to change the time or the amount of coffee going through so this makes it very very easy so these are two technologies that are used within this grinder just briefly talking about the touch screen here what you can see here is basically we have four different grind settings that we can set so we have our double espresso we have a single espresso and this one is blinking because i actually put on the actuator so if i press this it would start grinding. Very easy if you only use one setting, for example, just go with that one, very fast to use. And then we have our flush button, which is quite cool. If you press this, it just gives you this tiny bit of coffee. Many times, if you weigh the coffee and you have like 17.5 grams, but you want 18 grams, just press this and it just gives you this tiny little bit of coffee. And then if you press this finger button, it's just kind of like endless grinding. So if you want to grind yourself, you can just use that one. And it's super easy to change here. So just with two clicks, I go here into the menu, then here in this little booklet, and then I can change my recipes. So I can change here the time, and I can even change here the grind size. Otherwise, I can also change the grind size like this. So this particular grinder is the PGS version, which comes with a little motor to change the grind size. There's also gonna be a cheaper version that just has a wheel to change the grind size instead of this motor. So, and now for our hardcore grinder fans, we want to get a little bit more into detail about this grinder and the performance of course. Speaking of performance, that's one of the big things some of you might be interested in. This grinder grinds at about three grams per second. So for our double espresso, around 18 grams, we have around six seconds. First off, I'd like to start talking about the burrs as kind of the main thing about this grinder. The burrs are from Keba. Keba is a company from the Venice area that makes burrs for all sorts of companies and grinders, of course. So for this particular grinder, they made a new kind of geometry because as you know, the geometry is kind of um, responsible for the way the coffee breaks, the particular taste that you want from a grinder. So, and you can of course mess around with it a little bit. They used this new kind of geometry compared to what they used on the Magnum grinder, for example, also the elective grinder from the Chimbali. Um, the size of the burst is 64 millimeters and they're treated with the yellow speed treatment, which is a treatment that gives the burst to make it more durable. And making the burst more durable also helps you with having a more stable kind of result. Because usually if you have bursts, for example, that are, um, are more on the softer side and not as durable, for example, the problem you would have is that they would peak kind of from a performance and you have a peak performance of the burst. We have the perfect kind of coffee, for example, just for a brief time. While if you want, if you have a more durable, you don't have this peak over a longer lifespan of this kind of burst, you have a more stable kind of result and not this peak. So this is something you're looking for in the performance of burst, of course. These particular bursts, they have a lifespan of about 1500 kilograms of coffee which is quite good. And for the hardcore nerds, if you want to know the hardness, it's uh, 2,500 Vickers. In case somebody knows the way around this kind of unit, I certainly don't know too much about it, but I was told this is the hardness of the burst in case somebody wants to know. Speaking about stability. So one big thing with grinders is of course, you have a motor that spins your burst, grinds the coffee, and therefore you have some heat, which also messes with the coffee beans and the density of the coffee beans. But ideally, if I had a coffee shop, for example, I want the coffee to taste the same throughout the whole day, week, month, whatever. What this grinder has is a very, very powerful fan to kind of cool down the beans and keep them in the same temperature. If I were to press this, you can already hear the fan spinning, um, trying to cool down my chamber up here. That again, the coffee temperature or the bean temperature stays the same throughout the whole day. Very important. Because otherwise, you know, everybody barista knows this. If you, for example, work in summer in the coffee shop, 
it's warm throughout the day, it's humid, then you have to change the coffee a lot or the grind settings and it's a pain. So this kind of tries to reduce this by cooling it and kind of keeping it the same kind of temperature. So of course we want to look particularly on how the coffee drops into our pour filter. So again, I will grind some coffee. And you can already see, even though it's not like from the dropping from the top, but at an angle, it actually does a very good job at kind of centering the coffee so that you have it more in the middle compared to somewhere sprayed around. And also basically no spraying around of the coffee, no dirt. And so I can show again this little trick. And then you have your coffee somewhat um, distributed. If you look at the coffee itself, so I did some shaking now, but in general, it's very kind of fluffy. There's not a lot of static building up um, compared to other grinders, of course. I'd say overall in the Porterfield, it's a great result and pleasant to work with. I personally, as a small YouTuber that doesn't get paid, <laughs> sometimes you have to do other stuff as well. So I've worked at an exhibition working with this particular grinder, using it throughout two days. I think one day we made around 10 kilos with this grinder and it was super to work with. And it was very consistent. I hardly had to change any of the grind settings or anything. And just throughout the day, it went on. It's, it's, it's a real workhorse, if you'd ask me. So yeah, while sitting, I'll make some coffee. Kind of a weird position to temp. And let's turn around. So quite important, of course, now that we've made some coffee, we of course have to try it and talk a little bit about the result in the cup, of course. Of course, I've tried a few different coffees with this grinder and compared it to other grinders. And in general, I could say that I could add the feeling that it was that I got a little bit more sweetness out of the coffee compared to the other grinders. This is definitely a big plus and also the texture is really nice of the coffee. You know, when you look at uh, espresso grinders in particular, you don't want this just one peak that you have with filter grinders usually, but you actually want to have one small peak with a little finer coffee and then a larger peak with a little bit coarser. Just because of course for espresso, we need or want a crema and a nice body and all of this. And so therefore you need these kind of two different kind of peaks for the coffee. Generally, I could also say that I had the feeling, I haven't actually measured it or quantized it, but that there's a bit more crema compared to other grinders. So this is just an impression I've got. Maybe I'm wrong, but yeah, this is what I got. But like I said before, in general, I feel like it's a very sweet kind of coffee and very balanced, full body, also depending on the coffee use, but in general, compared to a different grinder. This was the result in the cup, which is very pleasant. Just talking about the overall usability of the grinder. To sum everything up for you about the new G50 by Le Cimbali, let's start top to bottom, outside to inside. So we have a new one kilogram hopper. We have our touch interface. We have this little fork, which is perfect for distributing a coffee. We have a the light here, kind of see the coffee dropping in, perfect drop-in angle. It's very easy to disassemble. Um, even from a serviceability standpoint, it's super easy to take apart for the service technicians. Then let's talk about the burrs. So we have a new 64 millimeter burr with the yellow speed treatment by Kaver, a very powerful motor. So together with these burrs, we have three grams per second. We have a powerful fan here that kind of keeps the beans always at the same temperature so that we don't have any temperature differences there. And then talking about technology standpoints here, we have the PGS system that enables the grinder to be connected to your La Cimbali or Faima espresso machine. We have the stabilizer, which makes setting the grinder so much, so, so much easier. If you'd ask me currently what kind of professional grinder I'd get, it would be definitely be this one. That's it from Bean Talk for today. Um, and the new Chief 50 grinder by La Cimbali. 
Um, if you have any questions about the grinder whatsoever, um, put it down in the comments, let me know. I hope I can answer them or get somebody to answer them for me. Until next time, drink loads of good coffee and see you then. Bye.